This is going to be the final video for the disassembly of this engine here. So I'll actually uh, crack open the crankcase and see what went wrong with it. So uh, first I'm going to end up taking off the oil pan here. And usually from the oil pan we should be able to tell a lot of what's going on because a lot of that stuff tends to collect down into the oil pan. So uh, I'm going to take that off as well as back here which is called the swing arm mount or an another engine mount um, but i need to take that off in order to crack both of these the cases apart so to do that we're going to take off all of the bolts around the circumference of the oil pan they're all the exact same size um, so you don't need to worry about getting them mixed up or anything um, same size same length everything so you can go ahead and just uh, put them together in like a ziploc bag and then for the uh, swing arm mount back here, uh, there's just four bolts on the back. Pull that off. There are some locator bushings underneath each one of the, those. So just pay attention to that. Pull those out and throw those in the baggie too. So I finally got the oil pan off of the engine. And here is what I've noticed. <laughs> so these are all bits of metal which is never good inside of an engine. And what this more than likely is, is it's actually one of the bearings uh, that would be on the crankshaft. Or in this case, it was uh, on one of the connecting rods. So if we go over to the other side here, you have both of the piston rods here. This one, no movement or play. This one, quite a bit. So there's where our spun bearing is okay so now i went ahead and took the engine and turned it upside down so we're actually looking at the bottom this is where the oil pan was and first thing i'm going to pull out this oil screen it's just a little o-ring holding it in and then what kawasaki did is they actually labeled all of the crankcase bolts in which order this of course would be the order to uh, install them but as you can see there's a Number six, it looks like right there. Number five, number two. And that's all for the, the bigger bolts, which are gonna be right down here, down the middle, which are the ones surrounding the actual uh, crankshaft. And what the service manual says to do is start with the smaller bolts, which are gonna be all the ones that are uh, on the outside here. So those as well. Okay, so I have all of the bolts out. Um, the bolts that surround the crankshaft, they also have a little uh, copper washer on them too. So just make sure uh, that you collect that as well. And then I went ahead and baggied everything up. So I have a service manual that basically outlines all these bolts too. So um, it's kind of hard not to figure out the way they go when you actually have a roadmap. So uh, now that I've had all these off, I went ahead and went around with it with a mallet and you just want to gently tap it um, you don't want to do it on areas that you know are basically meeting areas for like a gasket or something but just kind of in the hard spots and basically this just kind of loosens it up a little bit and then There we go. All right, so what we're looking at here is this is our crankshaft. Um, this would be the input shaft. And then here that actually has the sprocket on it would be the output shaft. So. The important part is transmission, which is going to be these two. I'm actually going to send these off um, to actually get them uh, cut. And it's basically a race cut on the dogs here. And what they do is they make it so it holds a little tighter. This, uh, the Ninja 400, if any of you have raced it, you've noticed that it tends to slip out of gear, um, usually sixth down to fifth. So what they do is called undercutting. And they just... Instead of kind of a rounded off surface, they, they go ahead and make like a, 
uh, an angled cut on both sides so it meets and it just has a nice uh, hard connection and yeah so now I'm actually gonna pull out the crankshaft here and what I can immediately tell is you see the connecting rods here how one's light and one's really dark so this is obviously our overheated one um, I, I do not know what the crankshaft looks like underneath there but more than likely I'm gonna have to replace this this whole crankshaft but the rest of it looks pretty decent so all uh, the bearings are intact um, there's no real bad marring on any of the gears or anything um, plus I'm sending those off to the machine anyway so yeah this is kind of it now for videos I got down to the root of the problem and uh, my next few videos are going to be of me actually reassembling it um, which you'll see is uh, <laughs> a lot less sloppy than disassembly um, because a lot it's a lot more technical and a lot more aligning of pieces I'm not going to be using any power tools because you are working with aluminum uh, which I didn't use them I never use them for any of these bolts that actually have the bearings in there so that is it now I'm just going to further disassemble all this send these off and yeah go from there so definitely uh, subscribe if you like the video please like and look forward to my reassembly of me building out this race engine thanks